Mouse Tube, Stephanie here, Mendoza Crafty. Welcome back, or hello if you're new. Today is Friday, June 2nd, 2017. How is everyone doing? It's Friday. <laughs> Yay! So I meant to film at the end of May, but it didn't happen for reasons that I shall explain in a minute. But you know, it's only two days into June. We're not too late yet, are we? <laughs> so. I have a lot to show you today, so I hope you're comfy, get your drink, get your stitching, whatever you need, because this is going to be a long one. <laughs> I think first we'll talk about Mania, which um, some of you will probably watch my vlogs, but for those of you who vlogs aren't your speed, I'll just go through it pretty quickly. So, excuse me a sec. The first thing I started doing Mania was Cookies for Santa by Sue Hillis. Cute little... Mostly typography design. So I worked on this um, two days, I think it was, or three days, something like that. I got this far, stitching it on 28 count white Monaco. And I did basically the top half, although the top half's not quite complete. There's more that has to go in there, blended floss and more of the, the detail, the leaves and the, the uh, fur leaves and everything. So. It's coming along though. I think it's really cute. Cookies for Santa, sugar, shortbread, and gingerbread boys. Thank you, dear Santa, for Christmas joys. <laughs> That's what it will say on the bottom half. So it was a lot of fun to stitch. Not too many colors and, you know, pretty quickly. This part is just done in backstitch with a little bit of cross stitching here and there. So that goes pretty quick. I definitely want to finish that project this year and put it up for Christmas, finished as a flat fold, like so. It comes with instructions for doing this, so, for the uh, finishing that is, as a flat, flat fold, so that's nice. All right, the next thing I started was Mill Hill, actually it was this one. I'll insert a picture, Bright and Beautiful by Leslie Tier. Right, so here's my progress. This is after three days, and I did not know what I was uh, biting off when I chose this project. It's got a lot of fractionals and stuff like that. Many, many color changes. This is basically the bottom left quarter, quadrant rather, of the chart, and it's a lot of fun to stitch. Um, very, you know, detailed and almost, shall we say, like photorealistic, so get a little closer. There's a lot of park threads hanging off there. You can kind of get an idea of the number of colors in this little piece. <laughs> so this is the first of four um, seasonal birds. This is the spring blue tit, which as I've learned is actually not to be found in the Americas. It's a Eurasian bird. Oh well. <laughs> It is from a, a British magazine, after all, Cross Stitch Collection, so, anyway. All right, so after that, I started Serafina by Mill Hill, and I'm not gonna show you the picture because you can definitely get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. So I worked on this for two days, I think, and it's all finished except for her skin and, of course, the beading, so, and the back stitch. I am hoping to finish this piece this month Actually, I'm going to take it out, work on it tonight, uh, or maybe this afternoon after I'm done the video or whatever. So hopefully I can finish it off within a day or two. That's on 14 count perforated paper. Yeah, it has a little bit of Krynik in there for the bugle. It's broccoli. It'll be fun to add the beads. But then I'll have two of these that are stitched but not fully finished, so I will need to get off my duff and, you know, finish them. Really, it doesn't require much. It's just a matter of, you know, gluing it to felt and cutting around the edges, so <laughs> she can hang her in there. All right, so the next thing I started was I Am a Stitcher by Cherrywood Design Studio, and I am choosing my own colors for this one. Stitching it on 36 count 
Haven, Belfast. Isn't that pretty? Pretty sky blue. So I'm using uh, silk threads for my stash for the most part though. I just go shopping. <laughs> um, the green one is new. The red one at the top is Water Lilies Cardinal. The purple is Axe of Violets by Hand Dyed Vicki Clayton, Fibers, Please. Blue is Filament Silk by Fiberlicious and Sapphire. And the green is Carrie's Creation Silk Gloss and Emerald. And then the white, the background pattern, is Water Lily Sandstone. So the midline of the chart is, well, this right here that I stitched. That's the midline of the chart right there. So I'm going to say that it's like half finished pretty much because, well, it's almost half finished. <laughs> Maybe 45%. <laughs> So the way the pattern is, it's like color one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm not going to be doing that. I might use eight unique colors, one for each phrase. Or I may wind up repeating the green or the purple. I don't know. We'll see. But really loving this piece. So much fun to stitch. I worked on it during Mania for four days, and then I just took it out on the last day of May. And I worked on it on the 31st and the 1st of June, i.e. yesterday, so last night. Love it, and I love this fabric. This is Haven, as I mentioned, by Picture This Plus, 36 cap linen. I need some more of this in my stash, but I don't know what for. I had to figure it out. I don't let, usually buy fabric without having a specific plan for it, so <laughs> it's a gorgeous color, though. And then the last thing I started doing Mania was Charm Santa by Sandy Orton for Leisure Arts. I will insert a pic. Okay, so here's my start. Worked on this three days during Mania. It's stitched on 32 count raw gold velvet. See that sparkle? Oh, I love it. So this chart is also no joke. <laughs> lots of blended colors, lots of fractionals. I didn't stitch any of the blended colors yet, but uh, I did what I could with the solid ones. Basic for the uh, bottom left of the chart. It's not, the bottom left is nowhere near finished yet. <laughs> but I got a decent little start. That's like Santa's robe and one of his boots. And then the, the blue stuff over here, that's like mountains and stuff in the background. and. This is a, a doll that he's holding. Those are the little doll boots there. Isn't that cute? <laughs> now this piece has a nice like vintage aesthetic, muted color palette. Really pretty. So I'm looking forward to getting back to this in July. So the other thing I did during Mania, in addition to those five starts, is I worked on uh, 10 whips. Sorry, my necklace is like weird. There we go. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> so I worked on 10 whips and I'll just go through those quickly because, um, you know, we've seen them before. <laughs> All right. So here is a uh, Dasher by Nora Corbett. I worked on this a bit during Mania. I also worked on it after Mania. I gave it a couple days, like four days, hoping to finish, and I didn't quite get there because I ran out of beads. So as you can see, it's mostly beaded, but not in that top right corner. And I haven't sewn on the treasures yet either, although I think I do have them all in my stash. So I think maybe I can finish this in just like one more day or something. I need to order those beads though. They're the these ones, the ice ones, Magnifica 10001, I think it is. And then also there's supposed to be beading in the uh, border. It's just white Magnifica beads, which I don't have. I was thinking about selling white beads, but you know, the regular white beads, but since I'm gonna have to order the ice Magnifica, I may as well order the white Magnifica as well. 
So I'll have to bead this corner, do the treasures, and do the uh, the border and the white. But uh, it's getting there. This is stitched on 32 count opal dolphus in the uh, cuter colorway by Picture of the Plus. This will be my fourth reindeer, and I think after this one, I'm going to take a break from the genre. For something about this one, it just seemed to take like so long. I think it's because of the here you see the uh, background pattern, the snow. That's all done in acrylic thread, which is like a light silvery blue, not too different from the fabric, and it was hard to see and hard to count, and yeah. <laughs> So here is my Joan Elliott Fire Goddess. I worked on this during Mania for like a short period of time and I did, I filled in like her skirt up here. So this is stitched on 32 count Belfast in the, I think it's Golden Harvest colorway by Silk Weaver Old. I will um, correct myself. That's not it. I'll have to check my spreadsheet. So this one is coming along. The bottom half is almost done except for down here. And then I'm going to have to do some back stitching. <laughs> I'll, I'll back stitch the bottom half before I move on to the top half. But I love this piece. So pretty. I don't have enough Joan Elliott in my rotation. She's one of my favorite designers. And I guess last year I always had two of hers going on because I was working on the 12 days of Christmas piece all year long. Alright, so here is King Author's Court by DMC. Here we go. King Author's Court by DMC. This is stitched on 32 count. Antique White Doberman, I think it is, and what I did during Mania is I just filled in this red business on the center crest on the other side of the goblet, which will later be done in a crinic thread. Sorry for all the cork threads, this piece has like a gazillion colors, as you can probably tell. <laughs> I really love it though. Beautiful rainbow colors and not sure when I'll get back to this, but it is one of my year whoops pieces. I am aiming for a finish by December. Okay, here is my albatross, Maiden in the Unicorn by Vermillion. Stitching this one, 36 count Edinburgh Antique White. Actually, I don't know if it's Edinburgh. It's a 36 count linen. It's not as nice as some of the Edinburgh that I have in my stash, though. So maybe it's not Edinburgh, but it's 36 count in any case. There she is. What I did during Mania is I did some of this back stitching down here, up to there, back stitching in the border. Very detailed, very slow going. <laughs> I am supposed to work on this project this month for Wine and Whips. I don't know if it's going to get a full week, we'll see. So, here is my Snowman and Friends stocking by Dimensions Gold. During Mania, what I did is I worked some on this. The background over here, the dark blue, which is 5 over 1, half cross. This is 18 count white beta. So this piece is coming along near the top. Basically what's left is, well, the snowman's hat, and then there's a moon and some sky, and then the name section, like the, the band at the top with the name. So it's pretty. And I will work on this, I might work on it this month. Maybe I can edge out a finish, we'll see. If not, definitely um, in July, for Christmas in July. All right, so next up is Titania by Mirabilia. I'm gonna start a pick. Here we 
go. This is stitched on 32 count Opal Lugana in the Sparkling Sundown colorway by Silk Weaver Old. So what I did during Mania is I worked a little bit on this like ribbon down here and then I worked on some of these lighter peach colors a little bit. So that's coming along. The bottom half is almost done. A couple more days probably would be enough to uh, finish it all. And then I can move on to the top half, which should be more fun because that will involve her wings and her torso and all that stuff and her face, of course. Which I stitch last because that's my favorite part. And it keeps me motivated. Sorry for the weird light. It's, it's really bright today. Okay, so another project that I worked on during Mania is... Fall Fairy by Dimensions Gold. This is stitched on 16 count light blue 8 o'clock. And what I did during Mania is I worked on some of this light blue background. So like from there to there and over there and over here. That's half cross, like two or three strands I think. I don't know. So that was, I mean that was pretty quick. Maybe like an hour and this piece I'm going to try to work on this month too for wine the lips because the um, the fabric kind of makes me whine. It's not as bad as it was initially though. I think being rolled up with all of my other whips in my cabinet has kind of softened the Ada. Okay, drop frame, sorry. So here we're going to get into my finishes. This is something I actually finished during Mania. It's my Heart Hunger Learning piece. Finishes in Orny. Thank you, Ingeborg, for the idea. What this is is a little bit of matte board cut into a sort of a narrow frame. I had to trim, trim, trim to get it small enough so it wouldn't be visible on the right side. <laughs> but I was able to write, you know, my date and initials on the back there, so that was nice. This is stitched on 22 count hard hunger with DMC Pearl Cotton dark green color 699 and the Karnak number 8 braid for the needle weaving gold metallic obviously and a few little beads on there because I can't leave well enough alone. <laughs> I use the pearl cotton for the hanger which not too fancy but you know once this is hung on the tree the hanger will basically disappear into the branches and that's cool with me. I want the ornament to be the focus, you know, I don't really care about the hanger too much. <laughs> so, thank you to Stitching with a Smile for the tutorial, and to my friend Louise for close-up photographs and patient answering of my questions. <laughs> this is my first <clears throat> venture into hard hunger, and I, mean, I don't know, I kind of mixed feelings about it. I definitely need to get better scissors for it though, like the curved ones that are meant for hard on her, I guess. <laughs> Cutting this thing out around the blanket stitch, that was the worst. Oh man, that took forever. <laughs> but I really enjoyed the, the cutting in the interior. That was fun. The cutting and the pulling of threads, that was by far the funnest part. And it wasn't scary at all, so if you want to try, you know, heart hunger, don't be intimidated, don't be scared. The cutting is fun. <laughs> so I finished this during Mania and then I fully finished it just, I guess, yesterday or whatever. And then the last piece I'm going to show you, the Castle by Teresa Wensler. I worked on this for six days after Mania and I finished it. This is stitched on 28 count Castle View Cashel Linen by Silk Weaver Old. It's stitched with a lot of blended threads, fractional stitches, blending filaments, tons of back stitching. <laughs> so, see if we can show you the sparkle a little bit. Dragon, all the greens and blues and some of the lighter gold colors are done with blending filament for sparkle and then the the dragon itself is backstitched with metallic fibers which 
I had to buy, but it wasn't that big of a deal. It was like $8 worth of some metallic cords and blending filament. I made one little mod to this. I backstitched the dragon, all the exterior edges, and the high luster and navy blue bending fil blending filament just because the pattern said to do it in 500. And I was like, what? Why am I going to use DMC for backstitching the exterior of the dragon after I've used seven different metallic fibers for backstitching all the other elements of the dragon? So there's like purple in the uh, wing around the pink, and there's confetti in the ribbons on the dragon, and there's garnet on the dragon's like um, the base of her spine, I guess. And there's dark gray uh, blending filament for the outline of the, the um, spikes against the rocks. And there's the, the dark blue is used, the, the navy blue is used for the fingers of the dragon. Isn't that cool? Love that. And I guess the dragon's face as well. I love her expression. Look at that curious expression where she's checking in on the, that top tower. Check out the buttressing on the towers. Isn't that cool? That's all accomplished with backstitch and lots of fashion, fractional stitches. <laughs> this project took 51 days. That's an estimate. I'm estimating three weeks when I started it in 2015. That's before I started tracking. And then I know for a fact it was 15 days last year and 15 days this year. So 51 total, which is actually probably the biggest thing I ever stitched in terms of like days of effort, <laughs> at least since I've been tracking. So there's a lot of backstitching in this piece, the castle walls, all the, the rocky cliff, but look at the dimension in the rocks, isn't that cool? And then as I mentioned, there are like seven or eight separate instructions pertaining to the backstitch of the dragon and they're all done in metallic fibers. <laughs> I like how the tail turned out, the sp spade-shaped tail, isn't that cool? You kind of see a little bit of the sparkle there and the, the dragon's tail. I love the hand on the, uh, the dragon's hand on the, or claw rather, on the roof there. That's cool. I love this wing, how that turned out. It was a pain to stitch though, all this in here is like confetti. Tons of fractionals as well. So the dragon, all the greens and blue tones are done with blending filament, and so are the some of the lighter gold tones and the spikes also done with blending filament. Different blending filaments. There's like probably 10 different blending filaments in here. I think I put blending filaments in the down here too in the water because Water should be sparkly, right? <laughs> well, my favorite thing about this piece is definitely the dragon herself, her expression, the intelligent look in her eye. Look at that little white highlight. Isn't that cute? And I love the center tower here with the lit windows and the fancy buttress. Sparkle, sparkle. This thing is seriously sparkly in real life. I hope it comes out a little bit in the video. But I can't wait to frame this. I'm planning on sort of an opu opulent flame, uh, framing treatment because this is such a special piece, you know. I want to do like a metallic mat and a suede mat and a fancy frame and stuff. And did I mention the fabric? 28 count. Cashel and the Castle View colorway by Silk Weaver Old. It's kind of like a blue and light variegated. I was aiming for something suggestive of water and sky, and I think I got it. So, very happy with this piece. My first Teresa Wensler. I, um, I think I need to move again because the, the light. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, first Teresa Wensler, and I 
are just in love with the uh, design and the aesthetic and the finish and everything. The only thing is that I used a, um, a old pamphlet to stitch it the pattern and um, you can buy these patterns computer or generated from patterns online and when I start my next Tree Sowensa, which will be the fantasy triptych, even though I own the old pamphlet, I think I'm just going to go online and buy the, the PDF because it'll be much easier to stitch from. <laughs> All right, that's it for projects. Was that enough for you? That was like 16 projects or something. <laughs> but I guess I do have a couple more to show you. I did, the last couple days in May, I decided to take a break from stitching and I went on a finishing frenzy. <laughs> so I finished the ornament as I showed you and I also framed a couple pieces. So hang on a sec. <laughs> Okay, the first one is Aphrodite by Mirabilia. This is, it doesn't have glass in it yet, but it's a, a black frame with a rope detail, satin finish. So, I like that one. I think she's turned out pretty well. But I'll have to go and buy some more glass. So I only had one sheet in my stash and I used it for the other projects, which I will show you now. Okay, this one's fully finished with glass and everything, so glare is going to be kind of an issue, but we'll do our best. Okay, so there we go. Halloween Happiness by Imaginating. This is stitched on 32 count Treasure Trove Opalescent Belfast from Stuff We Were Old. It was a really fun thing to stitch, didn't take too long. And the frame is like a, um, well, it's wood and it's got sort of like a, a warm, almost red finish to it. On the, one of the uh, most, the highest uh, point really. And then it sort of goes down into darker tones as it recedes. So I love this frame, and I'm pleased. Happy Halloween! Creepy crawly, tricky treaty, ghostly ghouly, scary spooky, funky freaky, squirmy squishy, hazy crazy. A lot of fun details in this. My favorite might be the black cat saying meow, isn't that cute? I like the witch. The ghost peeking out of the A is really cute too. And the little mouse down there says, squeak. And the spiders. And the frog saying, ribbit. <laughs> so, this was a uh, fun piece to stitch, fun piece to frame. Okay, the other thing I framed is um, Petal Fairy by Mirabilia. She's a big girl. There we go. This is stitched on 32 count opalescent Lugana in the Ametrine colorway by Silk Weaver. This frame is, well, it's gold. It's pretty fancy. It's got kind of a, it's got fern detail on it and then a sort of crackled finish as it scoops inward and then on the inner edge, like a kind of a floral detail. And I think I'm going to put her in my bedroom. So, sorry for the glare. <laughs> She's uh, pretty big, as you can see, <laughs> about two feet tall. So, it's good to get her framed. And I drop frame, sorry. So I'm well on my way of working through my stash framing materials. I have one more left. It's meant for a Halloween piece. That piece is going to be double matted. So you may have noticed that none of the stuff I framed in the past couple, last few days was matted. It was just uh, laced and everything. And 
no match for those. I generally don't mat my mirrors because they're so big already. And uh, but the piece I'm going to mat, the Halloween piece, it's smaller. I'm going to double mat it, and that'll be fun. And then I have a couple of frames that are stashed for Christmas pieces, but I don't feel like framing Christmas right now, so <laughs> that will wait. All right, so I guess now I will get into my fall. Okay, so uh, technically I ordered some of the stuff in April when it didn't come to May. Well, I guess I did order this in May. So I ordered some floss, silk floss by Carrie's Creations. This is Bay Breeze. The color's not coming out. It's more, it's a really pretty teal color. It looks straight up blue here, sorry. This is Rainforest. Maybe if I use the whiteboard, it'll help. That's a little better, I think. Yeah. Just put it all up here. This one is Emerald. This is the one I was using on my piece. Sassy. And Sapphire. That's pretty good, I guess. No, I really like this floss. It's nice to work with and very soft. It's reasonably priced, two dollars, but the, the yardage is pretty short. It's just eight yards, so I've actually used three of those yards just for the I am a citra piece, the green that I switched already. So and the emerald. I'm glad I ordered the two greens because based on her um, DMC conversion, I thought I was going to want to use this one, the Rainforest, but when they came in the mail, I liked the emerald better, so I use that one instead. I think I'm going to use this one as well, the Sassy. I might use this blue one, we'll see, or the teal. This teal is kind of funny, though. I mean, depending on the lighting, it's kind of like... I don't know. We'll see. So that was it for my Curious Creations. I also got my birthday order from Dreama. I say birthday, but I really ordered it like the last, one of the last few days in April, and then it came in May. So I got this pattern. Richard and Veronica by Mirabilia. I had to get this. Green is my favorite color, and Victorian is my favorite era, so... I do plan to convert her though. I'll make her a blonde. I got these dinky dye scissors with the shamrocks just because I thought they were cute. <laughs> and I got this fabric. This is 28 count Zweigert Cashel and Smoky Pearl. I got this for Celtic Winter, which I'm hoping to start later this year. I'll be doing a sort of a royal blue conversion on her, sapphire blue or something like that. And then I got, I got some metallics from her too, but you saw them on my Teresa Wensler piece. <laughs> I got some stuff off eBay. Teresa Wensler Christmas Collection. I saw this for like under $10 and I snapped it up. <laughs> I love that cover piece, the Angel Possession. <laughs> Possession, sorry. Procession. <laughs> That's really nice. And the other thing that I really like in here is this one. Santa with the Horse Companions. I think that's so cool. You don't really see Santa so much with a horse. And the, I like the colors in that one. It's not like traditional red and green. It's more like Santa casual, you know? <laughs> and there's one other thing I wanted to... Oh, this one is kind of noteworthy. The Winter Carousel Horse. That one's nice.
I like these a lot. The Byzantine Ornies. I think those are cool. I might throw one or more of these into my monthly ornament uh, challenge this year. I don't know. We'll see. And then something else I picked up off eBay is The Lord's Prayer by Sony Creek. I have to thank Lori, mischievous stitcher. I love her, the Lord's Prayer that she has stitched and hanging in her dining room. Hers is by, it's not this one, it's a different designer, but I like this one. And this one is smaller than that one, so. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like it quite as much as the, um, the other one. I think that's my big toe designs, but I don't know. This one was a bargain. Got it from 123. It was on sale for like five or six dollars or something. So that was cool. And I got this off Amazon. My in laws gave me a gift card for my birthday. So I applied part of it towards this. Rudolph. The Red Nose Reindeer by Dimensions from the classic cartoon. This is digital plastic canvas and the floss is pre sorted. The plastic canvas, I'll show you. It's not that bad. It's not like the plastic canvas I remember from my childhood, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't think I'll mind too much stitching on this. I think I'd rather stitch on this than perforated paper, so. I might actually start one of these this um, month for my June ornament. And it's very specific the way you, the order you stitch them in and everything. So depending on what the chart looks like, then <laughs> that will determine which one I start first. I can't remember which one you start with in the uh, corner or whatever. So that would be fun. I guess that's it for my haul. <laughs> I am contemplating uh, buying some fabric. I'm gonna picture this plus. So uh, Needlecraft Corner, they have a special order picture this plus sale going on for the month of June. So it's basically the same deal as Christmas in July, but hopefully it won't take like, you know, three months to receive the fabric. <laughs> so, I'm gonna uh, order a few pieces. Oh, frame, sorry. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about plans. It's June now, June 2nd specifically, and it's Wine and Whips and Stitch Mania. That's normally one of my favorite events, and I certainly have a few projects that make me wine, like Made in the Unicorn, for example, but I don't know. I'm not really feeling it. I had such a, um, I don't know, regimented, perhaps is the word, <laughs> month of May between, like, Mania, you know, starting this and working on the whips and everything day by day. And then after Mania, I had several projects I wanted to fit in. So I had like, you know, X number of days for this project and days for that project and everything. So, and then when I took the, uh, the time off to do the framing and everything at the end of May, I was just like, I think I need a little break from my rotation. <laughs> so I picked up I Am A Stitcher on May 31st and loved working on that. So. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up the wine and whips thing with the um, stitch along in my group stitch from stash, which is finish it up June. So, and there's something similar going on in the soulful stitching group, soulful madness or something like that, where the idea is to finish stuff. So I just have too many whips now. I've got 14 active whips and I don't like having that many. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get a, few finishes and get it down to like 12 or so which will be um, you know a better place for me and preferably I prefer to have less than uh, 10 but I could probably knock out like four or five this month but I don't really want to because well I'll just admit it <laughs> so 
<laughs> this is the last month month for a stitch from stash, right? And then part B is going to start in July. And I have like a nice positive balance right now. So I earn credit for my finishes and what's the point in like doing a bunch of finishes and tacking a bunch of credit because as of like July 1st, everything is zeroed out and we start over. <laughs> so I'd rather save those finishes for July, you know? <laughs> And I finished a lot of things, like the first six months of the year. I'm not sure if I'll finish quite as many the second half because I have like six more large yearbooks projects that I want to finish and they're going to take some time. So they include The Maiden of the Unicorn, Fall Fairy, Titania, Fire Goddess, and... King Arthur's Court and the Snowman and Friends stocking. That's six. And then there's other things that I want to finish too, like the small like Christmas pieces, like the Serafina ornament and the Cookies for Santa piece. And I might like to finish this one too. I am a stitcher. It's just it doesn't take that much time and I love working on it and I want to frame it and hang it up over my stitchy spot basically. <laughs> yeah so I guess my plan for June is to kind of alternate between like these things my finished goals and the wine and whip so I will try to get in my I don't know if it'll be a full seven days each on Maiden the Unicorn and Fall Fairy, but I'll try. I'll try at least for five days. <laughs> and there's a lot of like Citrum Stash things going on. I'm trying to like get the spreadsheet updated and will be the final tally at the end of the month and the new session starting July 1. I guess what I'm going to do is once I get the spreadsheet all situated, which will be like in a few days time, I will open up membership again for the group so you know mid-june if you're interested you know just uh look us up it's called stitch from stash 2017 and it's a lot of fun it's not about like you know deprivation and misery or anything <laughs> it's just about sort of a more like mindful approach to stash enhancement and to appreciate the stuff we have and to finish our whips and stuff like that and we have uh, stitch alongs and we support each other and it's a positive sort of community. So if you're so inclined, definitely check it out. It's on Facebook. All right. I guess that is it for me. Sort of a long video. <laughs> oh, I guess I do have one more thing to show you. Some knitting. A couple days ago, I finished the sleeve. There's the sleeve cap see it sorry okay here we go Whiteboard. so this is shown on I mean it was knitted in a wool yarn Northampton Valley wool in the denim blue colorway cables twisted stitches bead stitch background 19 inch sleeve for my long monkey arms <laughs> That was nice. I mean, it took, it seemed like it took forever to finish, but I didn't really, I didn't work on it at all during Mania. I just decided to work on my stitching. And then after Mania, I launched into the castle and I was like, I'm not going to knit while I'm trying to finish the castle. You know? so, I, I only really worked on it the last couple days of May. So that was nice. Drop frame. Sorry. So I don't know what I'm going to do with my knitting. I may start another sleeve just to like work on in the car or something, but I don't know. I mean, it's summertime. I don't really feel like using a uh, wool sweater. I do want to have it done for like fall though, so I guess I should work on it this summer. And at least get the, the second sleeve finished. All 
All right, I will probably uh, try not to be away so long next time. I'll try to check in around mid-June and show you, you know, a couple finishes, hopefully. <laughs> and my whips. So I will uh, see you then. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you to everyone who subscribes, who leaves a comment. Thank you for everyone who sends me messages. Love you guys. You're all my city friends. <laughs> I hope that... Uh, I'm looking forward to meeting some of you in Austin in October for the uh, Floss Tube Retreat. And other people, um, maybe we'll meet someday. <laughs> All right, everyone. Take care. Happy stitching. Bye.